Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. Today we're going to look at not Final Cut Pro 10. We're going to actually get back to motion. Get back to motion. Time, right. time to get back to motion. There's been so much to talk about Final Cut with the updates and all of the, this 4K and the Mac Pro. There's been so much to talk about, but let's talk about a little bit of motion today because there's a lot of people who have been getting interested in motion. Of course. Yeah, all the Final Cut Pro users. And then there's people who just are interested in, in expanding from graphics to motion graphics. And um, in fact, we have a new training out now that uh, is for the introductory uh, level of somebody who just wants to understand what motion is right. about. It's called getting started in motion. Getting started in motion. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to give an example of something uh, similar to what we cover in the training, where you just learn how to build something in motion. It's not about animation, but just about composition, uh, uh, compositing elements together. And what I'm going to do is, if we look here, we're in motion, and I need to build kind of a label that I want to use in a video. And I've looked around on the internet and I found an image I like, and here, here it is right here. So I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna hit import. So we bring it into our project. And basically this is what I want, but of course I could buy something like this online, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm limited to how I can animate it. I can animate its position, rotation, scale, that sort of thing, but I don't have access to the separate elements. Uh, often you could buy things like this as layered Photoshop files or if you know Photoshop well, or Pixelmator, or some graphics application, you could create it yourself. And in fact, uh, Motion supports multi multiple layers in Photoshop files. It brings them in independently, and you have access to all those Photoshop layers, so you can animate them independently, which is great, but you're still limited to um, basically position, rotation, scale, putting masks on them, composite mode, stuff like that, which is great. But what I want to do is say, hey, let's build this from scratch in motion using motion objects. Because you get a lot more options when you oh. animate it. Yeah, because you've got all these shape behaviors and you've got text behaviors and there's just so many different things you can do. So let's do this. I'm going to leave this. I'm going to um, shift option drag to make it smaller as a reference and just stick it over in the corner here. A little postage stamp. Yeah, and we can always zoom in closer to take a look at it and zoom back out again. And I'm going to build this fairly quickly just to give an idea of the type of things you can do in motion kind of on a simple basis. I'm not going to animate it today. I bet you're going to start with a circle. <laughs> well, why not? Why not? There's a big circle in the background. So I'm going to down here to the toolbar and I'm going to select the circle tool. Hold down Option and Shift, which lets me draw a circle from where I'm start to dragging. It'll be a perfect circle, something like that. Escape, there's my circle. And notice the dynamic guides let me center it very easily. And I don't want an outline. I'm gonna use this, it's called the heads-up display here where I have some basic parameters. I wanna fill it, but um, if we look at this thing over here, there's like a gradient to that, isn't right. there? You want a gradient. I want a gradient. So for that, I'm going to go to the inspector, to the shape inspector, and choose the fill mode of gradient. And then there's a gradient editor I can mess around with here, but what I'm going to do is right click right in the canvas and choose edit gradient, which nice allows on -screen me. On screen controls there. On screen controls, absolutely. So let's just kind of drag this up and down to make it a little softer transition between the two colors. Nice. And then I'm going to right click on these color tags and try to select some uh, colors right in here to be somewhat similar. I'm not going to try to get perfect because this is the, the most challenging thing for me anyway, is really matching color well. So I'm just going to try to. Be like a pale, right it's good. It's pretty good. something like that. Yeah. Okay, it's it's not exactly. It's, it's a, a little more yellow, from light to dark. Yeah. Dark, in fact, yeah. I think this is a little. It should be a little bit more on the almost white than uh, than that kind of yellow. Something like that. Sort of a light to dark. Mm -hmm. Maybe pull this down a little further here. So something like that. Shift S back to my select tool, and then if we look at this thing again, there's another ring inside here. So let's just take this circle and hit Command D to duplicate it. By the way, let's make these a little bigger so we can see what we're doing. And normally I would go and name all these layers as I work, but I'm kind of working quickly here. So I'm going to take this, this duplicate and turn off the fill and turn on the outline and make that outline more of a kind of a brownish color. It looks yeah. a little light, something like that. And change the width, make it quite a bit thinner. And then I'm going to go to the inspector to the properties and change its scale. I could drag in the canvas. Sometimes I like oh, to use this. That's, that's nice. Something like that. Sure. Okay. And I don't necessarily want to make it exactly like the one that's my copy. I just want to use it as an idea to generate ideas. So I've got that. Now, how about these little spikes around the outside? I'm going to use another shape for that. And before I do, though, I'm going to go up to this view pop-up menu and turn on something called a grid, which gives me some... Will aid you in your drawing. Yeah, will aid me in my drawing. It sure will, because I can't draw, uh, I can't draw a straight line life. to save my life. So I'm going to choose the Bezier 
tool, and I'm just going to make a little triangle right here. Using those points. Yeah, using those points. And in fact, once I draw it, if snapping is enabled, which is the N key, uh, it will snap right to those vertices That's and make right. a nice little guy there. So there he is, shift S back to my regular tool. Let's turn that grid off again. And then I want this guy to have no outline, but I want it to have a fill. And let's also just hit this hooked arrow in the properties inspector. It'll center to, it. Yeah, it'll reset all of its right. properties. So it's right in the center. And now I'm going to make copies of it. And a great way to make copies of something is... Uh, Replication. I wanna, yeah, I could duplicate and position each one very oh, carefully. Wow, no way, man. Replicator. There's a thing right down here, a little tooltip, Replicator. So I'll click it, and immediately I get a whole bunch of copies. Ta-da! Nice. So it's not quite <laughs> what I want, a little, little parade of uh, triangles there. But what I'm going to do is, in the inspector, change the shape from a rectangle to a circle. And then instead of a tile fill, let's make it an outline. And let's increase the radius. And increase the number of them. Yeah, let's get more, a lot more points. Do, 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 do. And then there's an align angle checkbox. That's the kind of key thing here. They're not really pointed the right way, so let's change the angle. So they're pointing out like that. Yeah. And then let's drag this replicator. Usually that has a couple more points. A couple more points, yeah, okay. Look, if you look at the Oh yeah, that, isn't, that doesn't look very good. So let's add some more points. In yeah. fact, I'll drag right on the value field to really. Yeah, that's that's there bad. We oh, go. there we go. So that's nice, kind of nice. nice. Maybe adjust the radius a little bit. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Uh -huh. Okay, and I want that to have kind of a golden color too. So one way to do that is I'll go back to the source object and change its color to be something close. Yeah. yeah. By the way, while I'm in there, I, I can actually click and bring up the OS 10 color pick with that rather than clicking a little side arrow there, and I can take a color and store it in here for later use. This looks, by default, this little drawer is closed um, or reveals one area where you can store colors, but you can store lots of colors. I love this thing. Yeah, it's great. I, I cleaned it out recently, but you can store all <laughs> kind of colors in here to, uh, to use in your project, so you can I'll apply the same color over and over again. Okay, so let's make this little pill shape, and for that I'll use a rectangle, and you might think a rectangle might not be the right thing, but I'll draw it uh, about that size. I'll hit Escape. I'll press F1 to go to the Properties Inspector, and I'll hook there to reset it, and then just drag down in Y so it's exactly centered. And then I'm going to use this roundness parameter in the heads-up display to round it down a little bit. And then fill it. Something like that. Yeah, it needs a fill. And the fill, for the fill, let's make it exactly the same color as that outer thing. And then for the outline, let's make the outline much thinner, and let's make it a darker outline. And if I had saved that other color yeah, over outline, here, yeah. I would use it. And actually, I can. That's pretty easy. I can just select that uh, that circle. I'll drag this in here, so it's a saved one. And then we'll go back to um, this one. I just drew the rectangle and select its outline. And now, now the colors match. Exact same value now the colors match. Yeah. So great. So now we've got this going here. Now we just need some text. So the text tool is down, right down here, the big letter T. And I'll click in here and type life return time. Escape. In the heads up display, I'm going to use align it center. Uh, I'll um, I'll go to the properties inspector and reset it so it's centered. And let's make it bigger. And it's actually a good font already, but you can click this pop-up menu and just preview fonts right away. You just go through the list, you can see exactly what they look like very nice. by dropping through here. Very easy and fast and fluid, but I'll choose Impact. Uh, and I want to move this up a little bit just in Y, so I'll just drag it up. You want to close the gap between the lines. Yeah, too. so that'd be line spacing. Let's do that, and now it maybe needs to come down a little bit, and maybe I can make it a little bigger. Yeah. And let's color it very close to black, like very, very dark brown. And the last thing is this warranty. So let's just duplicate the text we've already got, Command-D. And I'll drag the duplicate straight down. I'll use the alignment guide this time to make sure it's centered. And I'll double click in here and type warranty, or and T, escape. Make that guy smaller. And uh, I'll just drag it into place. A little, uh, little, little, smaller. little smaller, right? That's a little bit too, too big and intense. Uh, maybe a little bit smaller. And then I might say, hey, that this rectangle I want to make a little smaller too. I'll hold the Option key down, which will resize both sides at the same nice, time. Isn't nice. that nice? Yes. So it keeps it really nice and even. And then I'll change that warranty color to be a little lighter. Maybe I'll match this color right here, something like that. Okay, so I might play more with the colors, but that's an idea of how you can build something. And once you've built this, 
if I select the group containing can, it. Can you just do yeah. one really thing? Yeah, Because yeah. you, you said earlier, and that's, you, you picked my interest here, that all, you can do all kinds of animation and things that you couldn't do another one. Can you just like okay. show it easy sure, sure, to, sure. Make, to make those little points yeah, spin let's, around let's, or something? Let's, let's, make those, let's, let's make those points do something. Let's make them animate on. So what I'll do, I'll choose the replicator, and I'm going to add a behavior. All right, so I'm going to go to the uh, behaviors tab, and uh, sorry, to the library, to the behaviors tab, and there are some behaviors for animating replicator. This one's called the sequence replicator behavior. I'll drag it on here, and I'll make it shorter so it doesn't take too long. Hit O for an hour point. I'll set a little play range, shift, uh, command option O. And what we want to do is choose what we want to animate. So with that guy selected, if I go to the inspector, I'm going to animate the scale of each of those little points. And I'm going to start from zero. So I'll go from zero. And now if I play, we see each of those guys animate on. Okay, so you can see how fast uh, I create a little animation. Was, yeah, exactly. And I, I could can never do that if that was a Photoshop. If, if I increase the spread, I'll get a little more smooth oh, animation. Nice. And then I can say, I want it to do faster, so I'll trim this behavior down. Yeah, this is something you couldn't do if it was a Photoshop, exactly. Absolutely. So that's just one example, and you can change the starting point. You can do all kinds of things to adjust this much more than that. In fact, we have a tutorial dedicated to, to replicators, right? Absolutely. Um, and if someone wanted to learn motion from scratch and something like this, and we're taking them through kind of all of the um, tools in motion, <laughs> we have something. Tee up. It's yes. Tee up. <laughs> yeah, we have a training dedicated to getting you started in motion, motion, getting started in motion. And then if you've already, if you're already familiar with motion, we have uh, tutorials on specific to publishing for Final Cut Pro 10, rigging and publishing for particles, mm -hmm. for shapes and masks, for replicators for text animation, mm -hmm. just about anything you want to do in motion, we've got dedicated tutorials to those subjects. Yeah. Fantastic. So thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you for showing us how easy it is to create cool graphics within motion in, in, a, in a matter of minutes, actually. So thank you again for watching Matt Break Studio. We'll see you in the next episode.